Welcome to a Factorio mod tutorial. My name is Nina. So today we're going to review the mod called Transport Drones. It's created by Clonan, the Factorio developer community manager, who's made some really interesting, interesting mods over the over the years. And uh, I want to review this one. And well, I should not review it. I want to do a tutorial for it because it has been reviewed, but I feel that it's rather complex and there are some quirks to it that uh, I think it's worthwhile to make a separate tutorial on this so uh, so it becomes a bit more clear how to use it most efficiently and i'm also going to apply this to one of my uh, ongoing series so it'll be uh, just a good way to catch up and just understand how it works as i apply it to my my factory base anyway so it's going to be uh, the mod is um, basically you can see there are some new buildings and stuff on my hotkey Basically, this is going to be sort of like a, trans a logistics network and sort of like trains, except it's road-based transport. And you know me, if you know me, you know I love road-based transport for some odd reason. So it starts with a building called a supply depot. It's nice red, so of course it leads our thoughts over to a provider chest, which is not uh, completely, uh, completely off. Either. And likewise, we have a request depot, which obviously leads our thoughts over to a requester and that's basically the start of things now we do connect these two and these are not connected by themselves so we need to connect them by a road that goes here it's very important that you can see when you place these they have a little extra thing attached and that's the road attachment that's what needs to be on the road and that one is also a bit weird but that's just the way it is so now we have a supply depot and a request depot connected to each other through a road. Well, that's not quite enough. You also need to set in here. As soon as you click it, you can select what you want to request. And in my case here, in this one, I will set up for uh, to use automation, uh, sorry, logistic science pack as a as our test thing. Now you can see that. Overlay changes here. It says now we can put in transport drones and we can put in petroleum gas and we can now get some I have some logistics science pack here. Now nothing happens. That's kind of like uh, having a robotic network without robots. So that's obviously not working. So next up. Well, obviously there's also nothing inbound. So let's build two, three, four, five. So we put 1000 in here. And if we just uh, put a single drone in here, and nothing works because basically you don't have any fuel. This is the, the parallel to having a robotics network where you have robots in, but you do not have any power. So these do not require any power. You can see they're, they're not powered at all. They don't take anything. It's just a box. So the power actually comes in from the fact that these drones need petroleum gas. Now this is the first place where I got a bit confused as I was testing this because uh, this has a fluid input. So let's just, but this is where you get to see another thing. You can't build anything on a road, which is really interesting because you can't just, you can't build across it. You can of course do undergrounds underneath it, which makes sense. So that means the roads are going to be a nice sacred path. The things you are allowed to build on the road is tracks and gates not walls but tracks and gates are allowed which is absolutely brilliant and what thing i don't know you can also build signals that's also interesting so uh, let me just um let me just uh save my curiosity to see if we can we can do this so that means we can build our tracks. No, it can build here, but it cannot be built in. Okay, that's that's good. I'm, I'm happy about this. Okay, so you can build signals, you can build tracks, and you can build gates. And that will work across this. This is very nice, so you need to keep this in mind. This also means that there'll be some quirks in terms of how to match that way. Now, we still don't have anything working, so that's uh, that's something we need. We need to get fuel in here. The way this is done is through a separate fuel thingy yeah so we 
hook this up to petroleum. This is basically a big box. It goes up to 5,000, what it can store. And we make it now connected to the network. Now these three things are connected to the same network. This one can't do anything. This is just a, this is just a box. This is the one that has a bit of logic to it because it has this, but nothing happens. And you can see this one also operates as a depot. And now watch as we get this off the ground. I'm gonna put a transport drone in, which immediately goes out with some petroleum, goes back. And when this one has petroleum, we will make a delivery back and forth. And see also here, 49, 48. Okay, so for one transport drone brings in 500 petroleum. Each transport drone, as it picks up, consumes or takes 50 takes 50 petroleum and then goes back and forth and uses and then uses in this case two petroleum for the fuel here. That's okay. And now you might say, well, how did what? Why? Why 200? What about what about the rest? Well. That's uh, you, you notice also that I did not set any logistics request. I just said what to request, but not how much to request. The way this is, is designed, it's a clever way to go around it, is basically saying it is transporting. Each transport drone will make sure that there is one stack available. So if I insert one more, then one more will go out and fill up. See, now it says one of two. One is on the field out of two available. Boom. And then it's happy. Now if I do sort of a... If I have some kind of draw from this location, then as soon as it draws out, when it goes less than one stack, it sends out. When it goes less than... Uh, less, less than two stacks, the first one goes out. Less than... Stack. So you can see here these two going back and forth. Even if we have a near infinite demand over here or supply over here, that's totally not what I wanted. Oh no, you're damn robots. All right, that's that's gonna hurt. <laughs> uh, hopefully not, hopefully not too much. All right, don't do that. You're in the middle of a tutorial. All right, so these two will not be able to keep this fed. So you have to balance sort of the consumption rate and the distance is what determines how many you want in here. All right, so now if I put 10 in here, no, I'll actually put 12, kind of not what I want. Oh, I thought it was crashing. It wasn't crashing, it was just an auto save. So you can see here they go back and forth and they will rest. If I take these out, then they will reach a steady state. And the steady state will be equal to 10 state, 10 stacks of this. And going in, boom, yes, 10 stacks. Slightly more, but that's, uh, right. so this is how the very basic network works. It gets a bit complicated in the sense that if you, if you have a lot of these, you have to have a fuel depot for each and where you could use this, I could imagine this maybe not so much for green science, but more in terms of having somewhere out in the world, you have some, some ore and then you bring it back to your smelter. That would make sense. Or from your smelter and back into somewhere else, or depending on what you want to do, or you can make it more, uh, more like a bus where you basically say is anything that you provide goes into a box and then anything that you request comes out, just request it. And then you have to have, have a big area. Uh, where this is okay so now let's do something else in terms of this we want to we want to build this one and i want to just try and show you something else that's really important so if this is the same and we have a connection yeah now i take out all logistics and i put it here so as you can see, this here, these 10 drones will not go to that one because there's no road connection to it. Likewise, if we did 
if we put in 10 more here these ones will not go because there's no connection to a fuel now what will happen if i connect these two well the happen is that these 10 will go out and pick up from here and some fuel will go into this one and then that will be sent out to get this let's see if that uh, holds true and you can see they're deploying at about a one per second rate and they go back and forth after the fuel got delivered it goes in and that one our little one here and there we go it sends out another supply and they come back right what's also important to note is that if I do this part these these will not deliver to that one but two reasons you could say <laughs> uh, they are connected they only go they go out to get something and come back here so they are locked to their requester depot it means they cannot end up here which means there's that's different from the roboport network because the roboport network once you put it into one robot one roboport then it becomes available to all of the roboports connected to it that's not how it works here so you need to determine and you need to insert transport drones into each requester based on how much you want to request the amount you want to request is dependent upon the consumption rate and the travel time the turnaround time here so i guess that's something you will be needed to get some kind of experience with it's going to be five it's going to be 100 because if you get 100 then you're gonna get 100 stacks in here and that might be a bit much in most cases but if you're bringing or in from a re remote location then that might be a good idea now there are also advanced here they have if we get transport drone stack capacity one that's uh, really interesting. Let's see if we what that means. Boom. What happens? That means now they can actually haul twice as much. And what gets really weird about it is you suddenly... There. You, you suddenly have... Like, they can haul twice as much. And that means the requester gets twice as much. So this is something I think is... Basically, at this point, I would say if I wanted 2,000 here, in order to make the same input, I would actually much rather do this one. There. Right, so I have five because that will give me 2,000 en route, and because they got just got twice as fast, then I need half as many. But that's not how it works. So keep that in mind as you upgrade these things. Also, uh, the stack speed, there are... They're not infinite, but you've got a few of those. You can also get the speed upgrade. Let's uh, look at that and see if we can see any noticeable difference. Well, it's a 20% speed upgrade. It's, it's not amazing, but it's something. Uh, let's take this one. Oh, that's not... I don't want the speed. I want the stack capacity. That one. See if we can get those in here. And then as this one completes, you will see that more goods taken in. So this takes you know what? I want this to be like that. I want 10. That will be without any stack capacity, it would fill up to 2000 with one stack capacity to fill up to 10,000. Uh damn, I just don't have enough. I just don't have enough for this. Damn. Alright, you know what? I'm gonna do it with one. It's to One here, two here. And now you can see this one. How much will one take? Already now. Yeah, how much is coming in for each stack? It's 1000 in each stack. And now it goes up to 2,000. So 1,200 is going to be the maximum stack. So they can haul like a obscene amount. And with them enough speed upgrades as well. Yes, that's also going to make a big difference there. Yes. So basically that's um, 
that's how this mod works i think it is really clever and really interesting and with a few upgrades as well it will it'll really make a big difference on how much you can haul especially for maybe not like uh, i don't know satellites or blue circuits or some like expensive materials that stacks expensive materials that stacks high such as uh, rocket science or blue circuits or modules that might be a bit risky to do this or maybe have to be a bit more careful about it but in uh, for haulage just overall haulage i think it's an absolutely fantastic mod and uh, it's, it's really doing really fun uh, so we're going to work this into our next uh, let's play series our current let's play series to see uh, how much we can just uh, hammer away at this one to, uh, to get it working now i should warn you that as of right now uh, if you do some kind of weird things you can kind of sometimes abuse it by um, tricking these boxes here and so so save often in a mod like this and otherwise you might end up losing uh, progress because it is like it's a location that has like with scripting so it's inherently fragile i don't know how it works in multiplayer not tested in multiplayer i don't know how it works but uh, since it's cloning he is usually very good at uh, fixing issues when it when it breaks so anyway Thank you very much for watching. I hope that you find this little mod interesting and uh, maybe you want to try it out yourself. This is definitely something I feel is important to go a bit more into detail with or just have started uh, implementing it. So with that, thank you for joining. I hope to see you in another video here on my channel. And uh, the next time, stay effective.